Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. My name's Mark Nelson. I came to Hartford to talk to you about a federal assignment. I'm from the Treasury Department, Bureau of Narcotics. We need an insurance investigator. For what? To go to London on a case that has us stopped here. I'm uh, in the Commonwealth Hotel. I'd like to have you come over. Wait a minute. What's insurance got to do with it? A company took a policy on a few thousand dollars worth of trunks en route to London. Somewhere in the load is a half a million in narcotics. We want you to take the trip with it. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you Edmund O'Brien in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. To make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Here's a taste treat you can enjoy indoors, outdoors, at work, or at play. The cool, long-lasting mint flavor refreshes you. The smooth, steady chewing helps keep you fresh and alert. Adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Treasury Department, Bureau of Narcotics, Washington, D.C. The following is an accounting of my expenditures during investigation of the London matter. Expense account item one, $1.75, cab fare to Commonwealth Hotel. I'll uh, give you the background as briefly as I can, Dollar. We allowed the entry of some narcotics from India into Seattle. We've been trying to break up a big ring in the Pacific Northwest. But the stuff didn't stay there. We followed it south into Beverly Hills. Have you ever heard of Dorothy Rivers and Broderick Green? The woman? I think so. I saw her in a couple of plays in New York, didn't I? Yes, yes, that's the one. She's been out west for the past two years making movies. Green's her husband, a director. The narcotics went to them. Well, to their house, at least. Well, they must have servants. Yes, yes, they did, but that doesn't do us any good. There were four of them, but three of them have been discharged. They all had a hand in packing the trunks for this London trip. So any one of them or all of them could have packed the narcotics. You're sure that's what happened? We know they went into the house, but nothing has come out but the trunks. And I searched the place myself just before I flew east. Why don't you want to stop us? We cabled Scotland Yard, and they told us there's been a big increase in contraband over there in the past couple of years. Hmm. You think this could be part of a pattern? Well, it's possible. You see, because they need our dollars, British customs make it a point to extend a lot of courtesies to these visiting film celebrities. The stars always arrive with a lot of belongings and usually with a servant or two. In the case of Green and his wife, just one. A confidential secretary, a Miss Miller, Lorraine Miller. She's traveling with the trunks. Now, I want you to get acquainted with her. Well, that shouldn't be too difficult. Who's the policy with? Standard Liability Company. 20000 for a two-week period. That's a short-term gamble. It'd pay the company to keep an eye on it. Couldn't you use that? Well, it would depend on how young and susceptible this Miller girl is. <laughs> She's young, Dollar. I got close enough to appreciate that. Expense account item two, $675, passage to England on the SS Morristown. Before boarding, I received a few more bits of instruction by phone from T-Man Nelson. We've been in touch with Scotland Yard again, Dollar. They're assigning one of their best men to the case. And Inspector Finch, he'll, he'll arrange to meet you when your ship docks. We sent him a description. Yeah, Finch. Okay. What else? Well, we still aren't sure about the Miller girl, but her brother is uh, going on the same ship. That could happen. He's got a passport under another name, Miles Fanning. Now, if you need help on the trip, the ship's detective is Clarence Dawn. Dawn. Okay, I'll find him. Okay. Inspector Finch is in London, and I'm flying over in a few days. I'll find you. Hey, Nelson, are you sure you trust me? <laughs> I'll let you know when we finish this thing. Bon voyage. Expense 
Expense account item three, eight dollars. Bar bill. I met Lorraine Miller in a small lounge on B-deck as we left New York Harbor. She struck me as being young, all right, but susceptible only when she wanted to be. She had a face that didn't need much makeup, an auburn hair that didn't need much messing with. Her hazel eyes were wide-spaced and seemingly candid, but they didn't tell me whether or not she knew who I really was. It must be an exciting job. Travel a lot, meet interesting people. Yes, I once met a pig named Rollo who had eaten a diamond bracelet. <laughs> really, Mr. Dollar? Hey, uh, how long are you going to be in England? About a year, I guess. The Greens are going to make a picture with somebody's frozen pounds. It's a smart thing to do, you know. Everybody who is anybody has some frozen pounds. You don't like these people. <laughs> if it shows, it's because of this martini before lunch. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. So am I. You traveling alone? Yeah, but that's my line, isn't it? What do you have, a cabin or a suite? A cabin. Then it's my line. I have a suite. I'll go take a nap in the tub, and you meet me there at five. Mm. There's a little bar, and I'll order some things, and we'll be able to get some music on the radio and have dinner there. Oh, I really shouldn't. Hidden away from the rest of the people. Sound of the ocean outside. You'll like it. If I could only be sure that Mother won't worry about it. <laughs> the cocktails were good, and so was the dinner. But the radio was full of static, and, as far as my assignment went... The conversation was unsatisfactory. I learned a lot about Lorraine Miller and a little about the Greens, but none of it tied in with the case. The whole evening made it almost impossible for me to suspect that she could be mixed up with narcotics until the fourth brandy. Jim? What is it? Oh, no, no. It's a porthole. Somebody pushed it open. It blew open. It startled me, that's all. Somebody pushed it. You saw him. You started to call out his name. No, I didn't, Johnny. It startled me so. My mind was a thousand miles away in that Come bang. over here and sit down. I'm sorry, Johnny. That was ridiculous. Why don't you want to tell me who it was? I saw him, too. Now, who are you afraid of? Don't ask me any more, Johnny. But I want you to tell me. All right. You want to spoil everything with your stubborn crying? It was my ex-husband. He followed me before. Now, if you'll please leave. Johnny, I won't be able to see you again. <laughs> Selfishly, I was sorry it had to happen, but it meant progress. I knew it had been a brother outside the porthole, and she was covering up for him. The portly, balding ship's detective, Clarence Dawn, was sporting a well-worn flannel bathrobe and Congress gaiters when he let me into his cabin a half hour later. Ah, uh, well, welcome aboard, Dollar. They told me about you. Yeah, I looked for you up in the ballroom. I never bother with the ballroom the first night out. The con merchants are just picking their marks, the... Slick gamblers are softening the suckers by letting them win. Nothing you can get your teeth into first night out. Tomorrow I go to work. Oh, sit down. Huh? Yeah, thanks. Sit down. Well, yeah. Customs told me you might contact me. Always glad to help if I can. Thank you. There's a passenger aboard named of Miles Fanning. Fanning? Well, I got a duplicate list here somewhere. Oh, yeah. yeah. Faggot, Fallon, Fanning. Miles D. Fanning. Number 22 and six. Yeah, that's the name. You know anything about him? No, oh, I see. I keep a notebook. Names of some of the hot ones that make the crossing. Fanny. 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 Well, he's not here. Don't know anything about him. What's his specialty? Well, this trip he's using Ford's papers. Fanning's not his real name. Say, I'd better report that, hadn't I? No. It? No, the federal men want him left alone. Is he hot? He could be. Oh, yeah. Can't let me in on it, huh? I know how it is. I wish you'd pick him out tomorrow. Keep your eye on him for me. Sure, absolutely. Glad to help. Anything special you want? Ah, I'd like to know if he meets the girl in number 12A deck, Lorraine Miller. Auburn hair, hazel eyes, about five feet four. Got it. I'd like to know if he sends any cables ahead to London. I'd like to see copies if I could. I'll get word to the radio operators right away. Uh, thanks for the cooperation, Dawn. I'll check back with you tomorrow night. Right. <laughs> I checked back with him on the following five nights, and he had nothing to report. The days and evenings I spent as casually as I could, and never once saw the Miller girl. According to Dawn, she had her meals in a cabin and never left it. Her brother was pointed out to me, and I felt his eyes on me now and then, so I knew he recognized me. Then, the night before we were due to dock in Southampton, I was surprised in my cabin by an unmistakably feminine knock on the door. Hello? 
I think I owe you an apology. Well, I didn't expect this. Come on in. Sit down. I'm sorry, Johnny. I wish I hadn't blown up. Why did you? I don't know. I guess because... Well, it was hardly the time for an ex-husband to come prowling around. It was too bad. Huh. The trip that started out to be a lark, this one's turned into a big flop. Have you enjoyed it? Well, I've met a lot of those interesting people, bridge players, deck tennis players, kind of ass the players, fat old gossips with jewels, drunks, nothing like them. Yes? This is Dorn, Dorn. Uh, oh, yes, Mrs. Johnson. Hmm? Oh, you can't talk. Uh, yes, that's right. Well, I'll make it short. They met after dinner. Fanny went to the Miller cabin. Oh? Uh, oh, I'm awfully sorry, Mrs. Johnson. I couldn't make it tonight, uh... A previous engagement, but thanks for calling. I'll stay on him and see you later. I hope you find somebody. Night. That was one of them. Could I fill in a contract? Mr. Johnson is seasick. We can get together in London, can't we? Yeah, sounds fine. I think we can work it out. I hope so, Johnny. I really do. Now I have to go. I want to get everything packed tonight. <laughs> I poured myself a nightcap after she'd left. A big one, because I was confused. I didn't know why she'd come or how much she knew about the narcotics or how much she thought I knew. It was the first drink I'd had in my cabin out of my own bottle, and it was the last. I felt it the minute it was down, and there was nothing I could do about it. But it was painless. The ship seemed to roll more heavily, and I pitched forward toward my bunk. After that, the ship could have sunk. And I wouldn't have known about it. To make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The lively, full-bodied, real mint flavor cools your mouth, moistens your throat, freshens your taste. And the chewing itself gives you a little lift. Helps you keep going at your best. So for real chewing enjoyment that's refreshing and long-lasting, always keep Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. Healthful, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum will make every day more enjoyable. And now with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we return you to the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, Mr. Dollar? Mr. Dollar? Can you hear me, sir? Uh, what? You must try to stay awake. Can you open your eyes? Who are you? Chief Inspector Finch of Scotland Yard. Oh. Oh. The girl. I'm afraid Miss Miller has disembarked. Uh, Fanning? He's being followed by one of my men. Mr. Dollar, your system received a large amount of opiate, enough to render you unconscious for almost 12 hours. Do you know who administered it? Well, in Southampton. Yes. There's a girl. She'd come to my cabin and there was a phone call. A phone call, sir? Yeah, the ship's detective has been giving me a hand, keeping his eye on Fanning. I, I wasn't watching her. She must have drugged the whiskey while I was talking. Oh, I was stupid. I shouldn't worry if I were you. The situation is nicely under control. The trunks? En route to the green residence. However, the men in the lorry with it are from Scotland Yard. They'll unpack them, and I assure you, nothing will pass on them. Mm-hmm. Nice going, Inspector. Thank you, sir. We like to try. Now, if you could raise yourself and drink some of this coffee. All right. Yeah. Oh, shouldn't be this hard. A nasty experience. Okay, let's have the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Splendid. When you feel strong enough, we'll have an ambulance move you to my flat. 
You may rest there, and we shall await developments. It took a lot of coffee and a lot of time. But by early afternoon, we were in the inspector's flat, waiting for word. It came at 4.30. Yes? Mm-hmm. Are you quite positive? I see, I see. Very well, Sergeant. Return to the yard. I'll phone you there if I need you. Mr. Dollar, is it possible that an error was committed on the other side? Was the narcotics never left there? They didn't find them? No. After meticulous search. Oh, Treasury's not going to make a mistake like that with a half million dollars worth. The narcotics left the States, all right. Perhaps they're still on the ship. May have got the wind up since you were aboard and discarded the original plan. Mm, I don't know. I suppose it's a thought. Right. I'll arrange for a search party at once. Inspector, who in London would be able to buy this amount of narcotics? That question had occurred to me. The answer shouldn't be too difficult to find. Perhaps you'd care to accompany me to my office while we try. <laughs> we rather pride ourselves upon our efficiency. <laughs> Ten minutes after we got there, the ponderous machinery that is Scotland Yard started grinding out files on criminals. They were indexed according to every possible feature or characteristic. In the space of two hours, we had the name of every known narcotic suspect in London, and flying squad men had been sent out to cover them. But the first report that came in was negative. The ship had been searched without success. Then the phone rang again. Inspector Finch. Huh? Oh, yes. Yes, he's here. Mr. Dollar? Oh, thank you. Oh. This is Nelson Dollar. I just got in. Oh, good. Uh, have you heard about the mess? Part of it. I went down to the ship. Dawn told me what happened to you. Are you all right? Yeah, sure, I'm all right. But the stuff got through. It's loose someplace here in London. The trunks? Unloaded and searched by Scotland Yard men. Nothing. What about the girl? He's being watched. Anything on Miles Fanning? Well, the Yard's tailing him, too. Say, Nelson, are you sure the narcotics were put aboard the ship? Positive. But I'll, uh, I'll get right on the transatlantic phone and get somebody to recheck the trail. I'm staying at the Empire. Call me if something breaks. Yeah, right. Treasury man, he's going to check the state to see if there's a slip. Good. Hmm? Half a million dollars? Mm. Rather a nuisance having that. Ah, this may be something. Yes? Mm-hmm. See, there's a driver and a radio car at the main entrance. We want to stay in touch. Thank you. What was it? Any progress? Yes. Most unpleasant progress. The constable I signed to follow the chap who calls himself Fanny is shot to death. Oh? Progress lies in the fact that your ship detective fellow, Clarence Dawn, was killed at approximately the same time. Dawn? Yes. Do you have a pistol, Mr. D- Dollar? It's on the ship. We won't bother going there. I'll have two issued to us before we leave. I spoke to Constable Wilde before he died, sir. He said he heard shots and ran into the house. By the time he reached the corridor, this Fanning bloke was leaving his room. He tried to stop him. I see. And Fanning? He bolted out the back way, sir. Did he say if he was carrying anything? No, sir. He... uh... Hold on a minute. That's what he was trying to say. Port, he said before he died. He was trying to say portmanteau. Uh-huh. It's still expensive, progress. That's the room, sir. Yes, yes. The constable, hop down to the car like a good chap and ask the sergeant to radio in in addition to the fanny description. The fact that he's carrying a traveling bag. Yes, sir. Huh. Is this Clarence Dawn? Yeah. And I guess the answer to a few things. Then Dawn carried the contraband here from the ship, quarreled with Fanning, for the division was spoiled, and was then shot by Fanning, would you say? Yes, that's exactly what I'd say. Then Fanning's our man. We'll have to find him. Right. Yeah, I'd like to go to the green place, talk to the Miller girl, Inspector. Of course. Hmm. Clarence Dawn. You know, I thought... How could I have been so... Green 
residence was dark when we arrived, and there was no response to either the doorbell or our shouts. We pulled up a few yards, and while we waited, we listened to the nervous talk between the radio cars that were combing the city for the man we called Fanny. Avenue. A man answering the Fanny description has been reported in the square. Request flying squad men to search the building. Uh, that's three and a half hour we've been here. Must be a million men in London who answer his description. And so we shall have to question a million men. 47Y, 47Y to 14B. Are you still in Charing Cross Road? Over. 14B, 14B here. Still in Charing Cross Road? Over. 47Y to 14B. Investigate 1936 Bentley crossing into your section. 1936 Bentley. Close coupled sedan. Black. Registration GY4110. GY4110. Acknowledge. Over. Cut it, Sergeant. Cut it. 14B. Sergeant. GY4110. Uh, switch off the receiver. Oh, yes, sir. There's a car. Looks like it's stopping. Hmm? Taxi. There she is. Come on, Inspector. Uh, but let me do the talking, will you? Right, you are. Lorraine? Who is it? Johnny. Johnny, where have you been? Where is he, Lorraine? What happened to you? I looked for you when we were docking. I came to your cabin and well, knocked... Stop it. Where is he, your brother? Johnny. Come on, where is he? What has he done this time? What'd you say? What has Jim done? You know what he's done. No, I, I don't. He wouldn't tell me. After everything that's happened, after you've lied to protect him, you're asking me to believe that you didn't know what he was doing? Yes, I'm asking you to believe me. You don't have to. I haven't known anything about Jim since the war. It wasn't my brother who came home. It was somebody else. Somebody to be ashamed of. A stranger I gave money to so he'd leave me alone. But he never did. It was the war. What has he done this time? Tell me, Lorraine, he knew you were coming to London? Yes. You saw him while you were getting ready to leave? He needed money. I hired him to help with the packing. Where is he, Lorraine? I've got a right to know what he's if done. If you're telling the truth, it doesn't make any difference. The man's a criminal. He has to be taken. Now, I want you to tell me where he is. He's not my brother anymore, so it doesn't matter. He's going to Tangiers. How? On a ship or a plane? A ship. Which one? I don't know. I don't know. He's leaving at nine in the morning. If he doesn't, he'll drag me into whatever it is. An accomplice, he said. But I don't care anymore. I don't care. Well, Miss Patola? What do you think of it, Inspector? I don't think she was lying. We've had the same trouble here in England. Young boys who found themselves fighting a war as children. They were no more than grown-up children. And one day they were told they'd won it. I've seen them. They can't cope with our rather sorry victory, and they simply don't care. Loyalties mean nothing. They want money, and they don't care what they do to get it. Perhaps you, an American, and I, an Englishman, are partially to blame. Yeah, I guess the war is still with us, Inspector. After you, sir. Thanks. Sergeant? Yes, sir? I want to know which ship is sailing for Tangier tomorrow morning at nine. Right, sir. When you find out where she's docked, ask the yard to contact Mr. Nelson at the... Uh, uh, the Empire. The Hotel Empire. Yes, sir. In the meantime, Sergeant, you might drive towards Royal Albert Dock. Right you are, sir. The ship turned out to be the city of Bombay. Before we drew to a stop at Royal Albert Dock, we passed through what must have been half of the mobile police force of London. That must be Nelson's car. Yeah, there he is. Come along, Sergeant. We want you to stand guard at the gangway. Right, sir. Hello there, Dollar. I was beginning to wonder if you'd ever get here. It's only been ten minutes, Nelson. Uh, this is Inspector Finch at Scotland Yard. Pleasure, sir. How do you do? Well, Mr. Dollar, Mr. Nelson, as you so quaintly put it on the other side, this is it. You're sure he's there? Oh, quite sure. Yeah, we got a radio report. And we hope they've cleared the ship of everybody else. Well, we might as well go. Right you are. I'm ready. Mr. Dollar? It's up to you. Thanks. You there? Is Mr. Fanning aboard? Aye, he's aboard. Take his 
Sergeant. Right there. You received word from Scotland Yard? I did. Then you'll allow us to come aboard after him? You can come aboard. He knows you've come. He's got a gun. Where is he? He went forward, on deck. Everything below is closed off. Very good. We can find him up this way? That's the way. There's a winter porrid. Good protection. Down behind the hatch. Hey, Miller, Fanning, whatever you call yourself. Come on out. We've got the Treasury Department and Scotland Yard here, so come on out. He won't do it. He won't, Dollar. It's too late for him. I'm going to cross over to the other side while you cover me. It may draw him out. Are we ready? Wait. Wait till I move down here. This is good. Good luck, Inspector. Use your head, Miller. Come on out. There he goes. Throw the ball. Don't let him get over. Inspector Finch. Yep. Nelson. Yes. Yes, you all right, Dollar? Yeah, what about him? He's dead, Dollar. We can search his cabin now. <laughs> traveling bag with its half-million-dollar contents was just inside Fanning's door. Expense account item four, same as item two. Transportation back to the States and Hartford. I saw Lorraine Miller once before I left. And I made her a promise I hope Inspector Finch will be able to keep. That only the name Fanning would make the official records in the front page. Because the name Miller had already gotten more than it deserved. Expense account total, $1,580.20. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, friends, to make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. There's lots of cooling, real mint flavor in every stick. And chewing Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling fresh and alert. You feel better, work better, get more fun out of doing things. Though indoors, outdoors, wherever you go, keep some healthful, refreshing Wrigley's Spearmint chewing gum handy. To make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to delicious Wrigley's Spearmint chewing gum. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, brought to you by Wrigley Spearmint Gum, stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role, and is written by Gil Dowd and David Ellis, with music composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Edmund O'Brien can soon be seen starring in the Columbia Pictures production, 7-Eleven Ocean Drive. Featured in tonight's cast were Wally Mayer, Virginia Gregg, Herb Butterfield, Dana Herlihy, Tudor Owen, Ben Wright, and Alec Harford. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's story of Johnny Dollar and that you're enjoying delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum every day. We invite you to join us again next week at this same time when, from Hollywood, Edmund O'Brien returns in another adventure of Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>